Real Country, 1430 AM and 107.3 FM, WRDN. Brian Winnikins, we're at World Dairy Expo. And uh, thank you to our expo sponsors, including uh, Compure Financial, Anibis Silo, also Osseoplastics, Synergy Co-op, and AMPI. And, yep, we're at the AMPI booth. And uh, joining us right now, Sarah Schmidt uh, with the AMPI. And, Sarah, thanks for joining us. So nice to be back in person, isn't it? It's really interesting, Brian. We haven't been here for two years, but it feels like coming home. There's so much tradition about World Dairy Expo. Awesome to see friends, um, meet new people. It's a really great gathering for all of dairy. Let's talk about uh, the co-op after uh, the pandemic 2020. How did and how's the co-op doing? Yeah, so AMPI, as you know, is based in the upper Midwest. So I, our dairy farmers are in North and South Dakota, Nebraska, Minnesota, Iowa, and Wisconsin. And what AMPI does really well is make really good cheese. And we also make butter out of our New Ulm, Minnesota plant. Cheese and butter were the darlings of the pandemic. When people wore home, baking, cooking, what do you turn to but cheese and butter, the old reliable. So for us, it, it was a good year. We saw a great demand in both cheese and butter. Unfortunately, when you look at the industry as a whole, half of our sales go to retail, half of our sales go to the restaurant industry. And so when our restaurant customers were suffering, we, we felt that pain as well. We saw the uptick in retail demand, but we definitely felt the downturn in food service demand. We're starting to come out of it. We're starting to see more activity in that food service um, sector. It comes and goes and comes back again. The Delta variant has been a questionable, but by and large, consumer demand for cheese and butter has been great. Has the co-op talked about, okay, because of what happened in 2020 with that retail or with the, the, the food service demand of trying to make some changes so the co-op doesn't get caught like that again? You know, you certainly need to look at the supply chain and all the logistical issues that you experienced, um, whether it had to do with packaging that was held up, um, ingredients, um, even for us as we begin to export cheese, the cargo shipments. There's so many different facets of the supply chain that the pandemic hit. You need to ask your question, are you you going to make investments for once in a century pandemics. And so that's what our dairy farmers, the co-op board of directors is considering. How best do we position the co-op for success and for dairy farmers success, but also being ready for these unforeseen circumstances like a pandemic. Meanwhile, uh, as for 2021, a lot of uh, members are asking about the dairy margin program. That program has really come in handy as far as being an effective safety net. Now, I don't know a dairy farmer who wants to get a government payment, but we do appreciate that safety net when it's needed. And that's what the much improved dairy margin coverage program has done. In that 2018 farm bill, we were able to change the payment, change the calculation. It is making sense. It is working right now. And I know dairy farmers appreciate that. What I'm hearing from our farmers is the question mark of, what about the supplemental production history update that Congress passed in December? We were told that was going to be coming. We're still waiting. It's almost October. Would love to have some indication from USDA FSA when those dairy farmers can expect to see a production history update. And when I talk about a production history update, right now dairy farmers can only protect the milk production their farm made in either 12, 13, or 14, 2012, 2013, 2014. Farms have changed. Perhaps they've brought on a son or daughter or another family member. Milk volume has grown. We'd like to see the amount of milk they can protect be increased, and that's what we're talking about with that change. In addition, um, Congress recognized that dairy farmers pay for high-quality alfalfa hay, and that hay price was not previously included in the dairy margin coverage payment, and so we're going to see an update for high-quality alfalfa hay price, and again, just waiting on timing. When can dairy farmers expect that DMC alfalfa hay and supplemental production history update? Talking with Sarah Schmidt from uh, AMPI. Big talk recently, federal milk market orders, specifically class one, but AMPI is kind of taking a different thought towards it. And that is, let's take the federal milk market order, find a five gallon can of gas, pour it over it, a match, and start all over. We believe the federal order exists for a reason. 
But when it comes time to make changes to the federal order, we can't make one-off changes that unravel the whole system. So the dairy farmers of AMPI believe we need to take a whole look at the federal order, what works, what doesn't. For example, the manufacturing costs of producing a pound of cheese have changed dramatically, even in the last six months for that matter, let alone the last 20 years. And that's the last time that element of the federal order was updated. We're working with information that is dated, and that's not good for dairy farmers. So uh, AMPI does believe that we need to move towards full-scale federal order reform, and we have opportunity to do so. Um, in the upper Midwest, the vast majority of our milk goes to cheese, and so we're, we're most concerned with what impacts the class three formula. Those are things like that cheese manufacturing cost, and it, it makes a real difference on dairy farms. So really, you'd like to see just a, a, a hearing with Congress and USDA, just and, and let's go through every part of the order. Yes, that's the best way we can really take that opportunity. A, a full-scale federal order hearing is a big event. It, it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of people. Let's get it right. Not an emergency order hearing for a one piece of the federal order. We need to really take this opportunity to look at the whole thing and come out better on the other side. That is Sarah Schmidt uh, with AMPI. Come on by their booth uh, during World Dairy Expo. From World Dairy Expo, I'm Brian Winnikins.